everybody, and welcome to another episode of Comic Corner. Now, I assume that everybody already knows about Marvel's big event that transpired over the summer in which Peter Parker lost his life in an epic battle against the Green Goblin. No? No? What the hell, people? Do you guys live underneath a rock or something? No way. Hey, Rick, check this out. Fine. Fine. I'll explain what the hell happened. The death of Spider-Man started with Norman Osborn escaping from Sheila's prison. Which I have to say is kind of funny, considering that Green Goblin died in issues 117, Death of a Goblin, in which he accidentally kills his son Harry and asks a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent to end his life. It's kind of funny. So anyway, Norman escapes from the custody of S.H.I.E.L.D. and in the process, help breaks down his fellow supervillains such as Doc Ock, Kraven, Electro, and a few others to help him TAKE OVER THE WORLD! Of course! What? I had to do it at least once. Come on, give me a break. Don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. So while all this is going on, a war brews between the new Ultimates and the Ultimate Avengers. One thing leads to another, and Peter accidentally gets shot by the Punisher. This time I really got you. After being shot, Peter had two choices. One, go stop Norman and save Queens, or two, go to the hospital for his injuries and live. Being the hero that he is, Peter said, fuck the pain. Pain don't hurt. During the battle with the Goblin, Peter does eventually die from the loss of blood, but still manages to stop Norman Osborn for good, or at least we think so. This guy has more damn lives than Michelle Pfeiffer in Batman Returns. You killed me. The Penguin killed me. Batman killed me. That's three lives down. You got enough in there to finish me off? One way to find out. Four. Five. died honorably and it was heard all over the world but it wasn't long until a new Spider-Man came along in the form of Miles fucking Morales. In Ultimate Fallout number 4 we finally get a look at the new Spider-Man who's underneath the mask and to let it be known I wasn't real happy who it was. Okay but the sole purpose of killing off an iconic character like Peter Parker to bring in this guy to bring in change it's a fucking disgrace. And the fact that he looks I almost identical to Obama makes me want to fucking throw up in my hand. So now, after all the events have transpired over the several months, we finally get a look at Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Now, I do want to start off on a positive note and say I really like this cover art. It's simple, yet we know what it is. Sarah Pichel is a great talent and I love the way she draws Spider-Man. It's easy to recognize and everybody knows what it is. Other than that, there isn't really much to say about the cover besides it's a basic style of cover. The story starts off in some type of laboratory with none other than Norman Osborn. Hey! Hey, wait a goddamn second here! How the hell is this douchebag still alive? Peter killed his fucking ass! I mean, what? What's going on? From what I gather, the story takes place in the past. How far in the past, I'm not quite sure, since there isn't an indication on the page of when this is all taking place. Bendis. Brian Michael Bendis, my buddy. Come here. I know, Marvel really threw you a screwball with, with this whole, you know, Miles Morales, Peter Parker dying thing. But I know you're a better writer than this. And to leave an indication on what time frame this is taking place is fucking stupid! Apparently in the scene, Norman is trying to produce another spider which contains the same properties of the one that gave Peter his abilities. But just like the spider that bit Peter, this spider escapes as well. Also, please note that the spider has the number 42 on its back. You would think Norman would have these damn things under a lock and key by now, but no! He keeps making the same damn mistake over and over and over again. Where the hell does this guy get his degree? On the next page, there's a full page spread of the Daily Bugle newspaper stating that Norman Osborn is the Green Goblin. 
No fucking shit. It would have made more sense if they would have added a date or something, Bendis, so we know what damn time period we're in. After that, we meet Deadpool? I don't fucking know. He looks like Deadpool, except for he's black and gray. I'm not really sure who he is. But he breaks into Osborne's lab, and as luck would have it, the splitter crawls up his leg. Well, I guess we didn't see that one coming, did we? When we turn the page, we finally get introduced to Miles Morales, who has entered into a lottery in order to go to some private school. Now, I never went to private school. But I don't think you just enter a lottery in order to attend. I mean, doesn't GPA have anything to do with that? GPA plus, you know, money? I mean, do those people just, like... Can dumb kids just enter the lottery and get enrolled into the school? I mean, I'm not quite sure. I, I never heard of something like this. Oh well. Anyway, as luck would have it, Miles' number in the lottery did get picked. And do y'all know which number it is? That's right. 42. What a shocker. This is starting to sound like a bad comic book plot. So Miles gets picked, and the first thing he wants to do is go talk to his uncle Aaron, who looks a lot like Eddie Griffin. You know, alcoholic come up with any reason to drink. Why you drinking? It's Saturday. Why you drinking? It's Sunday. Jesus had wine at the Last Supper. It's Monday, first day back at the job. It's Tuesday. Kids getting on my goddamn nerve. It's Wednesday, hump day. The two talk for a while and we start to understand that Miles' parents don't want him socializing with his uncle Aaron. For one reason or another, we do not know yet. Hey Storm, you wanna play X-Men Destiny? <sighs> Alright, I'll talk to you later. As Miles sits on his uncle's couch, the spider from the laboratory crawls up and bites him in the arm. This suggests that Aaron is the black and gray Deadpool wannabe that broke into Norman's lab. Miles falls down and starts foaming at the mouth. Some time passed by and Miles finally awakes to see his father and his uncle arguing in the apartment. You stay away from my goddamn boy, you fucking thug! You ain't got no business in his life! You take your coke, your marijuana, and you get the fuck out of here! You not hang around my boy, dog. Upset with the arguing, Miles dashes from the apartment into the street, where he then turns invisible. Really? Really? Miles turns invisible. Peter Parker got screwed! Issue 1 ends with Miles half invisible with the words to be continued on the bottom of the page. Now, I'll have to admit, this comic wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but still it wasn't great. I understand that this is supposed to be the origin story, so I'll cut some slack, but by issue 5, if it doesn't get better, I'm going to have to cancel my subscription. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm white and I'm not a minority, but this doesn't seem like Spider-Man to me. I think new readers will like this issue, but long-time fans will eventually move on to something else. I still don't think this is smart on Marvel's part, but I want to see where it goes from here. And like I said, if it doesn't get better, I'll move on to something else. Until next time, guys, I'm Storm Zinc, and this has been Comic Corner.